classmates couldn't attend either session. So uh, I think it should be recording. Yes, okay. So first and foremost, just by yay or nay, did you all get the link to the video and the handout that I posted? I just got the link to the video, not to the handout. Okay, so in the chat, I'm gonna just post the, the link. I created a 15 minute video and a handout, and I think, oh, that's the wrong, it's tinyurl.com trial brief should take you to just the main page and then you can then you can uh, use that link to get to the contract dispute handout and the uh, the video and as I said I'm not going to cover what was in the video I want to take this a step further and give you some advanced tips that some of which were on the handout that I just didn't get to in the video but most of what I'm going to show you today wasn't in a handout as well. And I'm going to post some of the searches in chat so you can follow up with those. You know, I did a little bit more research on this issue earlier uh, today. And, you know, you've got a couple of different issues. It's, you know, breach of contract, obviously, contract formation, right? You're adding additional terms and you know goods versus services this is kind of a mixed this isn't just goods or services this is goods and services it's a hybrid contract because it involved the gym equipment and i believe the gym owner wanted them to do the accounting or handle the billing for him as well so th there's an argument that it's that it's a hybrid and when you run this search and again, normally you would start with secondary sources. I talked about that in the in the video. But when you run this particular search, which I'm going to copy this in place in the chat, um, hi, I'll call this hybrid search. One of the cases that comes up, and actually there are a couple of cases that came up that I think are going to be really kind of helpful for you when you're Steiner is one I talked about in the uh, in the video, but Transwestern Pipeline is another TK Power B Textron, and you'll notice that I actually ran this in state and federal court, and I think your professor, I, I you probably haven't talked about this yet, but this is something where I think they're going to let you get cases that interpret California law on the federal side. So if that is the case, I think you want to take a look at TK Power. And by the way, make sure you save everything to folders when you're using Westlaw. We'll talk about that in a second. But one of the things I didn't get to in the video was a shortcut for really getting highly relevant cases that analyze your case. When you pull up a case, you know that a head note covers three bases for you. A head note is going to give you a summary of every issue in the case. So it's a way for you to really gain a quick understanding of what the case is about. The second thing that a head note does for you, every head note from every case resides somewhere in this gigantic index of American law. It's very granular and it's an excellent way of getting relevant cases on point. So this particular issue from TK Power really talks about that hybrid goods and services. It's, you know, when you have a contract that has both, you know, as you do in the situation, you know, I might want to get every case in California classified to that specific point of law. And with one click, I can do that. And this is something I talked about in the video when I was using Steiner as 
as the model case. The third thing that head notes do, and what I didn't talk about in the video, there will be times when you will want to get, as I said earlier, cases that analyze your case for that specific point of law. TK Power, there are 21 cases total that have cited to this case, but two thirds of them, 13 of them cite to this case for that specific issue. So this is a way for you to get other relevant cases that back up your case for authority by, with one click. I mean, with one click, I'm gonna get those 13 cases that cite to Steiner for that particular point of law. So rather than you having to look through 21 cases, which isn't that many, granted, but rather than looking at all the cases, if you're only wanting to get cases that talked about your case for that issue, key site this head note is that functionality that's gonna save you a lot of time. And by the way, one of the things you're gonna to want to do is make sure when you're looking at a list on Westlaw that you have your level of detail set to most detail. It's gonna give you extra text here and make it, make it more efficient for you to go through a list. And you'll see when I go back to this search result, that's why I have so much extra text here. I can really go through a list quickly and identify which cases bear further investigation. Right now on your passwords, your level of detail is either less or more. Make sure you set it to most. So that's one thing I wanted to uh, point out quickly. Another shortcut, and this is really where we're getting into some advanced things. Another shortcut is to use terms and connectors. And I know you're probably not as comfortable with terms and connectors as you are with you know, a relevance ranked search, but terms and connectors is a really good search method for you to use. Once you've gotten a good foundation on your issue, it really allows you to target and get exactly what you need. And I'm gonna show you like an advanced feature. And again, don't worry about trying to emulate this. I'm gonna post this in the chat. Instead of me running this search, I'm about to run as a global search, which would get me documents from all these different categories. And that's fine if you wanted to run this breach of contract search this way. What I'm gonna do is click cases, drill into California, and now I'm going to run this search. I'm looking for breach in the same sentence as contract, and I want to make sure that every case I get also mentions, excuse me, goods and services in the same grammatical sentence. This isn't a real sophisticated terms and connectors search, but I wanna show you something advanced once I do that. Now, when you run this search, we got 143. That's a lot for you to go through. And I'm gonna tell you that a lot of these cases are, uh, I think I'm getting some feedback. So if I think I'm gonna just ask, you to mute there. Um, a lot of these cases are not relevant. And why do I say that? Well, when you run a terms and connectors search, it's giving you every case that mentions your issue, whether it mentions your issue once in dicta or once in a footnote. And that's really not helpful for you, but I'm gonna give you the shortcut and here it is. If your issue is mentioned in either the summary of the case, the synopsis, or in the head notes, you know the case is directly on point. I can tell that this Evergreen case is directly on point because it mentioned our issue in one of the head notes. So one of the things you can do with terms and connectors is, and I'm gonna just cut this search right here, on Westlaw, you always have an advanced link. If you click that, 
we can tell Westlaw, don't search the entire text of every case. What you should be searching at this point is only the summary of the case, the synopsis, and the head notes, the digest, looking for these terms. Now, when you do that, instead of going through 143 cases, some of which are not relevant, oops, I don't need that from the original. That's all I need right there. I cut it down to what looks like it's going to be the same result. I cut it down to 12 when I did that. And these are going to be 12 cases that are potentially relevant for what you are researching, that concept of goods versus services. And again, I'm going to copy this, place it in the chat. This is called a synopsis. Synop, I gotta spell it right. Synopsis Digest Search. Sci Di. And oops, I don't want to just send this to Gabe privately. I want everyone to have that. There we go. And if you click that link, you'll be able to replicate that. So you've got a nice group of 12 cases to start with. Similarly, and this is something on the handout. Uh, you know, you're, you're arguing over, you know, were the additional terms or were there additional terms added to the proposal that brought in the UCC? So you'll see that's one of the searches that I gave you on the, uh, on the handout there. I could actually do the same thing. 2207 is the UCC statute in California. And what did I say? The phrase additional terms. This is also going to net you some, some uh, interesting, well, I guess I should make sure I spell, not have additional in there twice, but this is going to net you some good results. So these are going to be 11 highly relevant cases that talked about the UCC statute in California, 2207, in the same grammatical paragraph as the phrase additional terms. And again, make sure you add these to folders. And I will put this in the chat as well. Additional relevant search. So terms and connectors, as I said, is not something that's easy, but once you get comfortable with it, it really lets you target uh, specific parts of a document much better than just a general relevant search. Uh, any questions on, on that? Because I'm going to go into trial court documents next. Make sense so far? You good? Okay. All right. So another thing that you have to do, you're writing a motion in opposition or in support of summary judgment. I do want to point out that, you know, one of the things you're going to be able to do standard, uh, standard of review, summary judgment, you could actually just run a search and Westlaw will give you the answer for summary judgment. You're going to probably have to write a paragraph that 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 talks about summary judgment. Um, you know, before you can get into the substantive argument of the brief, you will have to address why summary judgment is uh, is appropriate. But I'm going to show you an even easier way of of getting that answer right now. And that relates to, as I said, something called trial court documents. Now, trial court documents are content categories that you retrieve when you do this gigantic global search on Westlaw. So if you just did a relevance rank search like the one we started with, you would get trial court documents if you clicked show more. They are listed at the bottom of this list. The problem with this is 
you might be getting memos in support of summary judgment or in opposition to summary judgment, but you're also getting pleadings, you're getting motions to dismiss, you're getting motions in limine. It's not a real targeted way to search. So this shortcut, if you start from the home page and click trial court documents, select California, and then click advanced like we did earlier with the case law search, I now have the ability to, let's say I only wanted trial court documents that mention, well, the same, the same search we talked about earlier, the breach of contract, goods and services. But here's where this advanced template is gonna save you a ton of time scroll to the bottom and you can tell Westlaw what type of motion you want. You're writing a motion in support or opposition to summary judgment. So we can select motion for summary judgment, run that search, and now you're getting memos, actual documents that real attorneys submitted in California on this particular issue. And I'm gonna copy this. So you get that as well. So this is trial court documents uh, relating to summary judgment. Now, the thing I'm gonna tell you about these documents here, what you're gonna be able to do with these is use them almost like a secondary source to get background on your issue and how you want to argue this particular, this particular, um, your particular motion. And like I said earlier, you can do the same thing with that 2207 search. You know, how many trial court documents mention UCC 2207 in the same grammatical sentence as as, um, as additional terms, and, and we got eight. And again, you use these like you use a law review or any other secondary source, how you want to structure your argument for background to make sure you didn't miss anything. Now, final couple of tips, because I'm running short on time. Make sure you folder everything on Westlaw. Folders on Westlaw are gonna serve a number of purposes for you. First, uh, here's, first, I have an ability to share my folder with anyone at the school. Second, you have to submit a research trail. When you folder items, and click research report, it will itemize everything that you've, you've uh, added along with any notes you've created as well. And third, and this is the biggest reason you folder everything, Westlaw is going to analyze everything in your folder and it's going to break down and recommend additional documents that, that you didn't place in the folder. So if you wanna make sure you didn't miss anything, and I should have foldered a little more than three items, but it still did a good job of giving me additional documents that, that I didn't look at. Now, two final tips. One, hopefully you already are aware of, but before you submit your draft in a couple of weeks, run your document through Quick Check. Quick Check will analyze your brief and it will recommend Based on the arguments you made, it will recommend highly relevant cases and other documents that you might have missed. It also has a quotation checker. It will check your quote with the actual quote and let you know of any differences. And finally, and this is something I know you are not aware of, but New England Law subscribes to a lot of extra products other than West Law. One of them that you have access to that's going to be really helpful for the trial brief and for your appellate brief when you're a 2L 
something called drafting assistant. So when you're on Westlaw, if you click drafting assistant, what it will do is it will let you upload your brief, but then let me upload my document, but then it will actually go through your brief and give you an ability to make sure that you've cited everything in proper Allwood format. So I actually have a profile called Allwood already. If you click cite formatting, you wanna create a new profile and just change the rules to Allwood. That's it. Once you do that and you run the formatting, it'll go through your, your brief and make sure that you've used proper Allwood formatting. And if you haven't, it's gonna let you know that and let you make changes. It'll make the change automatically. It's gonna save you a ton of time and it's gonna just make you feel a little bit more comfortable. I mean, here you'll see that there are 59 citations that it found and it's giving me an ability to, with the formatting suggestions, either accept or skip the suggestions that, that, it, um, that it's giving me. But it's gonna, it's gonna really be something that uh, makes it a little bit easier from a formatting perspective. Any questions on that? Okay, that is all I had. I said I went two minutes over, but that's, uh, that's uh, not too bad. I can hang around if anyone has questions. Otherwise, uh, 